Hi everybody, uh, my name is Timothy Trespass and I'm a targeted individual. Um, I'm just making this video to uh, show the uh, proximity of high-powered microwave, probably Wi-Fi, uh, at a school site here. This we have um, Enrico Ferme Junior High School, Board of Education, City of New York. A beautiful place to go to school. And then, up here on the roof, if you can see it, we got microwave, uh, 1.2 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz something, Wi-Fi antennas, one, two, three, four, five of them on this corner of the building alone. Now, um, there's been a great deal of studies done with children and Wi-Fi slash cell phone uh, operation. A child's brain, if exposed to a cellular phone for one minute, uh, you know, talking on the phone next to their head, will produce ADHD-like symptoms for well over three hours. Uh, this is well documented, and <clears throat> using the phone <laughs> for longer, of course, will put you in that state for a long time. Uh, you know, adults have the same reaction. We get uh, attention deficit, we get frustration, we get, uh, you know, confusion, we get um, a whole bunch of stuff, actually, because it's, it's um, literally interfering with... The, uh, the way that your nervous system works. Um, microwaves at 1.2 gigahertz to, to 5 gigahertz to penetrate the skin to varying depths and degrees. Uh, this information can be looked up too. Distance from the transmitter, wattage power output of the transmitter, uh, and depth through the skin. Um, these patterns and frequencies that Wi-Fi is using um, since Wi-Fi basically blankets the uh, the world now, you know, any populated area has Wi-Fi in every house, and the smart meters are being put in houses that don't have Wi-Fi, or even if they do. Now, here's a little secret some of you didn't know uh, about Wi-Fi and cellular phone radiation. This is considered background radiation. Uh, it is measurable, quantifiable, and trackable. Now. Uh, interferometry is the science of looking at the combination of waveforms where certain waveforms will add together and other waveforms will subtract each other depending on the phase difference, uh, how they bounce, the angles, beam forming, etc, etc, etc. So, you can make a radar system, a through-the-wall radar system that works entirely on background radiation, Wi-Fi slash cell phone. Uh, since we're all blanketed in this this information, really all you need is some good Fourier transforms, uh, some type of time delay analysis, you know, interferometry, and, and you can build yourself a picture out of the interfering radio waves, how they're absorbed and not absorbed by a human body. Every type of material has a different absorption coefficient, different reflection coefficient. So basically what we're doing, by blanking our, blanking, blanketing ourselves in Wi-Fi signals and cellular phone signals, uh, by the way, we are beyond the point, more than half of the world's population has a cell phone. That's more than three billion cell phones in operation. More, more than, I don't know the exact number right now. Almost every populated center of the world is uh, blanketed in cell phone. Now that's not even talking about satellite radiation, GPS radiation that we're blanketed in continually. All of these signals, all of these frequencies can be used to use a passive uh, observational radar system to look through any material and see what you as a biological entity is doing at any particular point or space in time. Uh, have you ever wondered how Google can track your location so well uh, if you, even when you have location tracking GPS turned off on your cell phone? It's because they're using all the other Wi-Fi stations around and they're measuring the signal density as you go by, as you change. They're also measuring cell sites, which we know the geographical locations from. So there's so many ways to track uh, and radiate a person. The other thing that is important to realize is that the the structure 
of the data, the way the data is sent. Like, I'm speaking to you now in a language, it is English, it has a certain set of syntax, has certain letters, has uh, pauses, punctuation, different sounds. This is the syntax of my speech, and it's the way I communicate with you. Um, sending signals through the air via radio waves, you know, taking energy, turning it into a particular frequency, modulating it in a particular way, and sending it through the air, phase code mo uh, modulation, pulse code modulation, uh, frequency shift keying, I mean, there's many different ways to send information. The CDMA, uh, all of these, you know, um, what are they called, standards, are basically uh, a methodology that says, okay, here's how many bits in the byte, here's what the starting bit is, here's what the next bit stands for, it has, you know, these many bytes. It, it, basically, it's a code so that the receiver can receive the information and decode it and know what was being said. Well, that information that's being sent in a coded fashion puts out pulsing patterns uh, of, of transmitted energy. When you put it through a transmitter, it makes pulsing waveform patterns that pulse on and off, uh, depending on the type of modulation you're using, uh, change frequency, change phase, change... Now, these different types uh, of... My mind isn't working so well because of the more gallons, but these different types of modulation schemes and information carrying structures are in and of themselves capable of being used to entrain the human brain, uh, create certain brain states, etc., uh, etc. Et Basically, what I'm saying is the Wi Fi signal and the cell phone signal, yes, in and of itself, the fact that there's electromagnetic radiation that is not produced by the Earth, uh, that, uh, you know, is not biocompatible, is interfering with our genetic computers. The DNA is not local, by the way, that the information is supposedly non-local, and the DNA and the genes seem to be some type of biocomputer, which release biocoherent biophotonic energy. In other words, laser light. Your genes are, are constantly releasing laser light to talk to themselves, and other, other, other. There is also not only coherent, um, coherent biophotonic energy released, but also uh, scalar radio waves, uh, vector uh, energy radio waves, scalar energy radio waves that are being transmitted from your DNA as it talks to itself. And the source of this information that creates the DNA, we're not sure where it is. It seems to be non-local. In other words, not here. Uh, there's some science that is finding that uh, the liquid crystal matrix of your DNA um, and the energy it produces creates, so to speak, energy-based multiples of the biofield of the organism um, in time space, which we carry along with us, around us, and is used to re as far as the science that I read, to sort of re-establish or keep the coherence of the genetics uh, as they are. Now, with this understanding, uh, oh, and also the fact that when genes are changed, usually with genetics are changed, the entire organism undergoes a, a, a metamorphosis, a gene change, basically all at once. Uh, it's not like you have to go into every single cell and open it up and, and open the DNA and rewrite it and, you know, transcript it or whatever. No, you do it to one cell and it seems to automatically do it to all the cells. Um, the other thing is that we have uh, cellular communication. Our bodies, every cell in our body seems to talk to itself. Also, the biophotonic energy is released not just... Uh, at the level of the DNA, not just at the level of the genes, but also at the level of proteins and the building blocks that make up the proteins. So, uh, when we look at this with a different understanding that genetics do not, you know, they do determine who and what you are, 
but they're changeable. Their source seems to come from somewhere else, although it's here, you know, the information comes from somewhere else. I, I don't know, it's uh, hard to understand, hard to explain, but if you're getting the idea, uh, we are more than just our bodies. We are a spirit in a body in this third dimensional reality for a purpose. There must be a purpose. I mean, who would go through all this trouble to create a universe populated with, with sentient life forms, uh, all of which may be uh, a fragment of the, the universal mind, in other words, God, the creator, the whatever, that thing that made it all happen, that created it all out of nothing. Um, you know, although we think of ourselves as separate, um, in many ways we are one. That means that I am you, that you are me, 